I would like you all to picture the scene. It's a warm summer's evening. You've just had an amazing day with your friends. You're sat around the campfire. The sun's setting. It's t-shirt weather. You've got a belly full of barbecue and your favourite beverage in your hand. Right, sounds like the perfect evening, right? We'll just wait. So there's some storytelling going on, right? So someone's telling a story. Let's call her Jennifer. So Jennifer's telling a story. Maybe it's one of those real-life spooky ghost stories. Like, OK, so... So guys, you're never going to believe this. So like seven years ago, I was at my grandma's house and she had these like weird ceramic plate things and they were up on this mantelpiece and then the weirdest thing happened. But suddenly you stop listening to Jennifer. Why? Well, you just remembered you have the best spooky ghost story of all time. It's an absolute zinger. Something that happened to your sister's boyfriend's mum's dog one time, but that's not important, right? Just stay sister. So while Jennifer's there telling her story, you're not listening. In your head, you're rehearsing your story, right? Getting all the facts straight, preparing those bombshells. You're ready to swoop in with the best spooky ghost story of all time. Jennifer finishes her story, and you're not going to jump in straight away, right? Don't want to be that guy. You don't want everyone to know that the only thing you're thinking about right now, the only thing that matters in the whole world to you right now is the success of your story. Don't want to be that guy. So you say something like, wow, Jennifer, that, that really was a compelling spooky ghost story. I can't believe that happened to your grandma's ceramic plate seven years ago. See, they have no idea you weren't listening. And as you take that final breath and inhale, ready to tell your story, no, Gary comes in with his spooky ghost story. Of course it had to be Gary, right? Big mouth Gary. <sighs> but it's okay, right? Let Gary warm up the crowd. We've got more time to rehearse now, yeah? So Gary's there saying his story. You're there in your head getting all the details right, ready to swoop in. You're thinking about basking in that glow of everyone telling you how amazing your story is. Suddenly you open your ears again and well now Jennifer's talking again and she's going on about the time that her hamster got stuck in a piano and we've clearly moved away from ghost stories now. And the conversation dies down for a second and you are left with a choice. You can either deal with just not being able to tell that story anymore. The conversation's moved on, it's not really relevant anymore. You can deal with just having to internalise that irritating feeling of not getting to tell that amazing story you wanted to tell. Or you can risk that crushing feeling of nobody caring about your story whatsoever because, quite frankly, Spooky Joe's stories were ten minutes ago and now we're talking about funny pet stories and yes, this did happen to your sister's boyfriend's mum's dog but it's a ghost story, it doesn't really fit anymore. Now, I think we can all relate to this on some level. That feeling of really wanting to tell someone something and get a reaction. And if we can't get that, we feel irritation. And that's OK. Humans love telling stories. We love telling someone about a big, juicy piece of gossip. We love talking about some exciting news or something funny that's happened at work. And I call this desire and this need inside us, I call it the inner storytelling ego. Now, it's OK, because people also like listening to stories. People like hearing exciting news, they like hearing the latest gossip. OK, so we like to listen, we like to tell stories, but we need to get our ratios right. The worst conversations are the, I don't care about what you're saying, and I stopped listening like five minutes ago, but I'm going to keep pretending to listen, nod along, give you a few fake mm-hmms, just so that when you're finished, I can talk again about myself. Nobody likes those conversations. Nobody benefits from them. They're the worst kind of conversations. <coughs> what I'm challenging today is for you to become aware of your inner storytelling ego, <coughs> for you to learn how to control it in a way that leads to healthy communication and conversations which are rewarding both ways. Now, <coughs> I once met a man called Kevin. This is a completely true story. Kevin was a student, like me at the time, and we shared a kitchen between about 20 of us. And as such, you'd get into conversations with a different combination of people every night. 
But what I noticed about Kevin, gradually, was that he, he wouldn't speak unless you gave him like four or five seconds of silence first, even if you directly asked him a question. Now, don't get me wrong. If you said to him, hey, Kevin, that sandwich over there, is that yours? He's not going to go... Yeah, it's, it's my sandwich, yeah. But if you asked him a question like, what do you think about this? He would take those four or five seconds. And if he was in a group conversation, especially one in which it's hard to get a word in edgeways, he would be practically, practically if not completely, silent. So at first, I just thought Kevin was quiet, shy, maybe a bit socially awkward. But then when I actually found myself in conversations where he was given the space and time to think and then speak, I realised he was one of the wisest, most insightful students I'd ever met. And suddenly I had this huge amount of respect for him and everything that he said. And every word that came out of his mouth, I was fascinated to hear. What was so unique about Kevin wasn't his intelligence. I meet intelligent students all the time. What was so unique about Kevin was that he would take that time before he spoke. And he was more than happy if no one gave him space to speak. He was more than happy just standing back and listening, just observing all these bright, young, intelligent, energetic minds debating in conversations. He had achieved what I would call inner storytelling ego death. So what did I learn from Kevin? Well, in my opinion, Kevin is doing it right. Because when we listen, we're learning. But when we speak, we're teaching. I'm going to say it one more time, it's really important. When we're listening, we're learning. When we're speaking, we're teaching. So there's two things to take from this. Number one, if we listen more and speak less, surely we'll learn more. Number two, we have a responsibility when we're speaking to speak with intelligence and not to be so in a rush to bulldoze our view into that conversation that we're completely blind to everything that everyone else is saying. We've all been there, we've all done it. I am definitely guilty of it sometimes and I think that need to get your word in is a, a part of human interaction. It's a part of who we are as social beings and that's okay. We can't all be like Kevin but we can try to be a bit more like Kevin. Kevin taught me to step back, take a look at myself, think about how much listening and speaking I'm doing, to go for quality over quantity with my words, to stop using other people as a mirror for self-gratification. And now I find myself saying, close your mouth, open your ears, and if you're going to say something, think first. Is it going to add value to this conversation? Or am I just fueling that inner storytelling ego? And now I dream of a world in which conversations are slow and thoughtful, where interrupting is not necessary because we all just give each other space and time to think and speak, where we converse to learn, not just to educate. Imagine that, a world in which every conversation, everyone's trying to learn something from everyone else. That's what I dream of. So you might be wondering what this has to do with mental health. Well, let me tell you, listening has everything to do with mental health. You cannot support someone without listening. You cannot understand someone without listening. You cannot be someone's friend without, you guessed it, listening. So if any of you have ever been in a situation where someone comes to you seeking support and you just have no idea what to do or what to say, then I think what I'm about to say to you is worth listening to. So, humans. We're all humans, right? What's it like being a human? What makes us different from other animals? Well, I think this illustration by a man called Don Addis completely sums up what it is to be human. Now, for anyone who can't see, it's a bit fuzzy. We've got a picture of a man and a dog. The man is thinking, who, what, where, when, how, why, how much, how many, how long, how far, what for, what next, then what, why me? The dog is thinking about a bone. Now to me that sums up 
the difference between us and animals. Our brains are just far more complex, and I'm not saying we're superior. It's a blessing and it's a curse. The human brain is incredible, magnificent, brilliant, and it's often complete hell to live in. But it's not all doom and gloom, okay? Not at all, because we have each other. The one thing that makes having this crazy human mind bearable is that we have each other. So we can share our experience of our own existence with others who are going through similar experiences. We can relate to each other. We have the wonderful gift of empathy. What is empathy? Empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another person, to put yourself in their shoes, to see through their eyes, to see through their perspective. Empathy is not always easy. It takes a long time sometimes. How do you achieve it? Listening. Listening is the path to empathy, trust, and connection. When I say listening, what do I mean exactly? Is it as simple as just sitting there, closing your mouth, opening your ears, and you solve everyone's problems? No, unfortunately, it's not that simple. My job here at the University of Surrey is I run a service called Nightline, for which I used to be a student volunteer myself. I train students now to support other students over the phone. And the main skill I'm teaching them when I do this is active listening. So what is active listening? Active listening, it's about not giving your own advice, judgments, or opinions, because it's not about you. It's about giving someone a space to take all of this noise and lay it all out and just gradually work through it together. It's about allowing someone escape from the prison that is their own thoughts. Now, it takes hours and hours to train someone in active listening, but in the, these last five minutes, I want to give you guys the basics to try to convince you that this is such a useful tool for going from no understanding of someone's situation to complete understanding, empathy, and connection. But what's more important is that process itself, that conversation, that other person just being listened to, you being there, that's the most beneficial part. It's so beneficial and therapeutic for the person who's being listened to. So, I'm going to throw an example at you guys, all right? I want you to imagine when your friend walks into your room, they're crying, and they say, my boyfriend just cheated on me. Now, I imagine some of you would feel like you know exactly what to say and what to do, and others of you would be like, I have no idea how I would help that person. Some of you might be tempted to say, dump him. You're better than him. Never liked him anyway. You can do better. Now, right or wrong you may be about that, that's not for me to say, but I don't think your friend's going to be feeling any better. Brené Brown says, Rarely can a response make something better. What makes something better is connection. How do we achieve that? Cluedo. Stay with me. So imagine you're playing Cluedo, right? You're a detective. You've got to try and solve the mystery. You go straight in there, round one. You show up and you go, it's Colonel Mustard in the billiard room with the candlestick. You've asked no questions. You've done no detective work. You've just jumped straight in with a conclusion, a judgment, an opinion, advice. That's bad detective work. Well, active listening is not that different from just being a good detective. Asking questions to build up an understanding of someone else's situation. So let's go back to our scenario. Your friend walks into the room, they're crying, Poor thing, they've just been cheated on. Here's how I would handle it. <sighs> Come here, give me a hug, sit down. I just want you to know that I care about you and I'm here for you. Take as long as you need. So, when did you find out? 
What I'm doing here is I'm beginning a conversation, which if I have time, is hopefully going to last a very, very long time. Throughout this conversation, my aim is to take everything in here and just lay it out together and work through it together. Build an understanding of their situation. Let them just spill everything out. Talk about feelings, facts, options, worries, everything. You're not there to solve the problem. You can't make what happened go away. You can't change what's out there in the real world. That's not what you're there for. You're just there to help in here, help with the coping, help them feel better, help them feel listened to. I would go on to ask questions such as, how did you feel when you found out? What has he said to you since it happened? Tell me more about your relationship. How long have you guys been together? How has it changed over time, the relationship? Tell me about the trust in your relationship. How are you feeling now that we've been talking for an hour? Kind of sounds like an interview, right? But believe me, it's not. It's nothing like an interview because you're giving them time, as much time as they need to answer each question. And they can go down as many rabbit holes and tangents as they want because it's all about them. They can go wherever that brain is taking them. And just let them spill it all out. But why are we asking questions? We're asking questions to keep it a conversation. We're asking questions to show them that we're listening, that we care, and so that we can build that understanding of what their situation is, and from their perspective as well. So that's active listening in a nutshell, and there's more to it, for sure. But that's the essence of it. Throw in a little compassion, a little reassurance, Show them that you care. Show your human side. And that's listening. That's what it's about. But that's just one example, right? But this method, it works for any example, because the point is you don't need to know anything about their situation beforehand. The point is that you talk to them, you listen to them, you ask questions, and you, you learn about their situation. So to summarize, active listening. The purpose is all about the other person. The purpose of the conversation is about the other person. You've given them a space to spill all of that in their head and lay it all out and work through it. You're showing them that you care, you're showing your human side, and you're showing them that they can go at their own pace. You ask them questions, but you tell them they can tell you as little or as much as they want to. And if you're going to talk about yourself, Make sure you're doing it to build connection. If you're going to share a personal anecdote, that's fine, but make sure you're doing it because it's going to help you to become connected and be closer, and that you're not just fueling that storytelling in your ego. If you're going to give advice, only do it if they've asked for it, and only do it if you've done that detective work first. The most important thing to remember is it's the process, it's the conversation that's so beneficial. Because what you're doing is you're holding their hand while they're walking through the terrifying maze that is their own mind. And the longer that lasts, the longer they had someone there holding their hand. Finally, I want to leave you with something that was pointed out by the Greek philosopher Epictetus. He noted that we have two ears and one mouth. So perhaps we should use them in that ratio. Now, stop listening to me, start listening to each other. Thank you.